Welcome to the Allen Resources Problem Solving Video Series. My name is Fernando Dees and I teach finance at the Martin J. Whitman School of Management at Syracuse University. And today we'll cover derivatives level one problem solving. So let's go directly on to the problems. You're asked that an individual entering into a forward commitment to sell faces what kind of risk? The answers are the risk that prices will fall, the risk that prices will stay the same, or the risk that prices will rise. The correct answer, of course, is A. If you want to sell through a forward commitment, it is because you're afraid that prices will fall in the future. The S&P 500 futures is an OTC forward commitment, an exchange-traded contingent claim, an exchange-traded forward commitment, or an OTC contingent claim? The correct answer to this statement is an exchange-traded forward commitment. Remember that futures, by law, do have to trade on an exchange. And futures are also a form of a forward commitment. They're not a contingent claim. So they trade on an exchange, and they're a forward commitment. And the correct answer is C. Let's go to a, a question or statement about swaps. A swap is best described as A, a single forward commitment, B, an exchange-traded contingent claim, C, an over-the-counter contingent claim, and D, an over-the-counter series of forward commitments. First thing to recognize here is that a swap is not an exchange-traded derivative, but an over-the-counter derivative. So all the alternatives, which is actually uh, one, A and B actually, uh, that have an exchange uh, should be eliminated. Then we have two that claim that they're an over-the-counter instrument. Now, is a swap a contingent claim? No, a swap is not a contingent claim because the payoff of the swap does not depend on the occurrence of an event in the future. Therefore, the correct answer is D, an OTC series of forward commitments. Remember that a swap is a series of forward commitments that trades over the counter. And now a question regarding over the counter derivative markets. In over the counter der derivative markets, A, the clearing house serves as the counterparty to all transactions, B, counterparties bear credit risk, C, positions are marked to market. Well, first of all, in over-the-counter markets, you do not have a clearing house, so A is out of the question. In over-the-counter markets, positions are not marked to market, and therefore C is not the correct answer. B is counterparties in an over-the-counter uh, market for derivatives are the ones who bear credit risk. Let's go to another question. The notional of a derivative is, also called the notional value of a derivative, is what? The amount of the asset controlled with the derivative, the dollar value of the asset underlying the derivative, the value of the derivative, or the derivative price. Now, it is not the derivative price, because you know a forward contract doesn't have a price, uh, only there is a forward price. Uh, it is not the value of the derivative. In the case of an option, for example, the value of the derivative it will be represented by the option premium. And it's not the amount of the asset controlled by, uh, controlled with the derivative. It's not the number of barrels of oil that a derivative controls. It is the dollar value of the asset underlying the derivative. B is the correct answer. A put option is a contract giving its seller the right to sell the underlying asset, a contract obligating its buyer to sell the underlying, or a contract giving its owner the right to sell the underlying asset. The correct answer, of course, is C. A put option is a contract giving its owner the right, not the obligation, to sell the underlying asset at a fixed price in the future. So C is the correct answer 
to this question. Let's define what arbitrage is. And the question asks, arbitrage is A, a transaction involving equivalent assets. B, a transaction involving taking opposite positions in equivalent assets, selling for different prices. C, a transaction that involves unrelated securities. And D, a transaction with no hope for profitability. Obviously, you wouldn't do an arbitrage trade if there was no hope for profitability, so D is not the right one. It is not a transaction that involves under unrelated securities. As you see, in arbitrage involves the trading of equivalent assets or related securities. So the question is, which one between A and B is the answer? Well, A uh, states that arbitrage is a transaction involving equivalent assets, which is actually true. But B states that this transaction involves taking opposite positions in equivalent assets, selling for different prices, is the most accurate definition of what arbitrage is. You take opposite positions in equivalent assets that are selling at different prices. And that means there's an arbitrage opportunity and you're taking the advantage of this arbitrage opportunity to trade in the unrelated, in the related assets that are trading at different prices. So B is the correct answer. Treasury bills asked discount rate is 5%. Remember, this is an annual rate. What is the price of a $100 face value T-bill with expiration in 90 days? So this is the 90-day T-bill which underlies, for example, the futures contracts on T-bills. So what would be the price of this T-bill? Well, the alternatives are A, 95 dollars, B, 98.75, C, 95.24, or D, 98.76. How would you calculate this price? Well, remember, you have to subtract 5% adjusted by the 90 days to expiration from 1 and then multiply that number times the amount of face value of this Treasury bill. If you do that, you get $98.75 or be the right answer. The price of a 90-day T-bill per $100 face value is 98.375. With this information, what is the discount rate? Is it 5%, 4%, 6.5%, or 5.5%? From a previous problem, we know that in order to get this price per dollar face value, we had to subtract from 1 the discount rate times the time to mat- the adjustment for the time to maturity of this T bill, which is 90 days over a year of 360 days. So X is the unknown in this case. If we solve the equation for X, we get that X is equal to 1 minus the price given times 360 days divided by 90 days. And the result of that calculation gives U.065, which is 6.5%, or answer C. Let's suppose that you need to borrow $10 million and 180 day LIBOR is 2.75%, or 2 and 3 quarters of a percent. How much in principal plus interest do you owe at the end of 180 days? The idea here is that uh, a euro dollar time deposit accumulates interest, or interest is an auto on interest. So the only thing you have to do in this problem is multiply the notional amount, or the borrowed amount, times 1 plus the precise rate to give you the answer. What is the precise rate? Well, the precise rate is simply 0.0275, which is 2 and 3 quarters percent, adjusted by the time to expiration. Remember that the time to expiration is 180 days, and 180 days is half of the year. So if you multiply 2 and 3 quarters percent by a half, and then add that to 1 and multiply by notional value or the amount you borrow, you'll get the amount that you need to, uh, that you owe at the end of this period, which is 10 million, 137,500, or answer B.